Greetings everyone, Archimedes here, and welcome back to another Brickville LEGO video. And today, in our Taking Back Technics series, we'll be doing a continued exploration on beams. Now, this series may not be as action-packed as some of our previous seasons, but if you think about it, when you started your LEGO building, you started simple. You built tiny little insignificant cars with not much real building quality before you got to the really big cool creations you're making now. As such, here we'll be laying out a floor ground, just helping you see what Technic actually has to offer so that you can use it in your fabulous creations. So let's get started, shall we? First, we're going to take a quick review of normal Technic beams. As you might remember, Technic beams are based on an odd base. So instead of being even, like Lego bricks, which are usually like two, four, six, eight, ten, lo ten studs long, Technic beams are 15, 13, 11, nine, nine holes long. The only exception in the entire odd world of beamdom is the two whole beam. This is very tiny and it has certain limited uses. We're going to start at the top of the scale and work down. Now, these big pieces up at the top, like the 15, the 13, and the 11, those pieces are absolutely spectacular. If you want to make a frame for something, or if you want to make a long arm, or something like that out of tech. Well, the smaller pieces are better for perhaps precision movements, or small bracing. Normal beams are the basis of any good Lego Technic collection. Just like the basic 1x2s and 2x4s that you would have in, in your normal Lego collection. But just like normal bricks, like 1x2s, have certain variants, like angled variants or plates, beams do too. So without further ado, let me present to you to the second most fabulous sort of beam in any Technic collection. The angled lift arm. Now, I know that angled lift arm doesn't sound too, uh, fancy. But trust me, these things expand your Technic world tenfold. First of all, a word on terminology. <laughs> lift arm refers to any beam that has a cross hole, like this, on one end or another. This enables the beam to rotate on an axle around that point, and can prove very useful in your models. But we'll talk about axles and their various uses just a little later. In my opinion, there are two classes of LEGO Technic angled beams. We have the 90 degree angle angled beams, and the obtuse angled beams. If you don't know what obtuse means, don't worry. You'll get a whole bunch of that in geometry. For right now, obtuse, let's just say that obtuse means any angle greater than 90 degrees, or greater than this, alright? We'll start by talking about the right angle beams. The favorite use for the right angle beams is when making a frame, or any time you really want to change the direction of a beam and make it really solid. Let's say you want to make a frame to hold a motor or something. You could just take a beam and put two pegs in it, and another beam with two pegs, and then just simply stick two beams across, like this, and voila! Well, not quite. As you can see, this frame can rotate or turn on these pins. That can be rather problematic if you want this to stay rigid and strong. Now, let's substitute out these five hole beams with these five by three hole angle beams. As you can see, I've added two pins right next to one another on one side of the beam. When you attach the beam itself across here 
on two pins, and another on these two pins, you can see that it's very stable and won't shift around much. Then, if this one is stable, you can just simply attach this white beam the normal way down at the bottom here. And voila, a stable frame for whatever purpose you had for it. Using the smaller or larger sizes can be proved equally effective for larger or smaller frames. But as you can see on this large angle piece, it also has a 45 degree angle or a non 90 degree angle slope in here. Which brings us over to the second family of angle beams, the obtuse angle beams. Now, all of the obtuse angles are lift arms, as you can see by the cross holes on each one of them. Now, these lift arms are what will really start turning your models from Lego to Technic. Unlike ordinary Lego designs, which have lots of 90 degree angles or right angles, these Technic lift arms start expanding your building possibilities to some strange new angles. Like any other Lego piece, these obtuse Lego Technic lift arms have enormous possibilities, but their best real use is for, for setting things off at an angle. Oh, really, RC, you say? Angled lift arms set things off at an angle. Brilliant. But just think about that possibility for a minute. Think of all the rectangular Lego models you've had. Those models that you felt deep in your soul just don't have enough depth. With a few of these angle beams added, suddenly, you can have strange new curves and shapes in your models. Here is the obtuse angle family attached on a beam. Now, whether you can see it or not, the three by seven beam has a slightly different angle than the four by six and the four by four. While the four by six and the four by four have the exact same slope. That's just something to keep in mind when designing larger models, integrating all three of these. Now, we've spoken of two types of beams so far, normal Technic beams and angled Technic beams and lift arms. Now, let us move on to the final essential beam in any good Technic Builders collection, the half beam. Now, Half beams are, well, pretty much just that. One half a thickness of an ordinary beam. Just like plates in the normal Technic world, half beams have marvelous uses in making things smaller or fitting into certain spaces that normal beams just simply couldn't. First, let's take a look at the half beam Technic lift arms. As you can see, the smaller half beams at the top here are all lift arms because they all have cross holes at the top and bottom. In larger mechanical models, these small lift arms are priceless. For example, you could use them to automate small motions like a You crank. should note though, though that because these lift arms are smaller, they do have a tendency to snap at the cross holes. So I would suggest, if you're going to use them to carry any significant weight, I would stack them in sets of two, like this. Now, these larger Technic half beams are just that, beams. As you can see, none of them actually has the cross holes on them. However, they serve best the other main purpose now, of half beams. at first glance, this series of basic crossover Technic beams looks pretty simple. However, if you take a closer glance, you can see that there are Technic half beams, not whole beams, in between the crossover beams. Although the width of this frame is four Lego studs, as you can see there, there are three Technic beams equally interspersed along that four stud area. 
This is all due to those nice little half beams in between. Let's just run through some basic Lego geometry ex to explain it. Two half beams equal one whole beam. One whole beam equals the width of one stud. So, if there are three beams and two beam, two half beams, which add up to one whole beam space, there's a total width of four beams. Now, I know this may seem pretty simple, kind of basic, maybe just a little boring. However, sometime in your tech building, I am sure that you're going to want to position a beam in a certain way, and you're simply not going to be able to without this nice half beam design. Before we finish, one last half beam to talk about. Just like for every whole beam, there are angled beams, half beams also have some variants. And they have some very interesting looks and uses. Here we have five more Technic half beams. Please note, these are all lift arms, and thus have extended possibilities. First, we have this, a basic half beam right angle, which can be used very similarly to this right angle beam here. Next, we have this. Now, as you can see, it is another right angle half beam. However, there are a couple more possibilities with this, simply because the right angle, instead of being out to one side, the right angle here is straight in the middle. Then, we have the curved right angle, which is practically similar to our original half beam right angle. However, this one has this nice decorative swoosh on it. We also have a larger decorative half beam angle. As you can see, once again, only this one is slightly longer, and once again has the decorative swoosh. Now, these pieces are particularly useful if you want to add them to an outside of model, a model, to add some sort of aesthetic flair. Finally, we have the cam. Now, this piece, at first glance, just looks like a decorative half beam. It's pretty much just like a decorative version of the one by three half beam like this. That is true. However, it has one extra use. As you can see, you can fit a cross hole peg here and here, but you can also fit a cross hole peg halfway in between those two points, right in there. Now, that is halfway between the usual Lego geometry. As you can see, I can fit those two pins on very nicely, like that. But when you turn on the back side here, you can see that that third cross hole, right in between these two red ones, is halfway in between the usual Lego hole system. Like the Lego jumper plate, which allows you to set a Lego brick halfway in between the normal stud system, this Lego cam piece offers similar opportunities for beams. Today, we talked about beams. We talked about the basic Lego Technic beam. We talked about their angled variants, both the right angled variant and the obtuse angled variant. We also took a look at half beams and just began to scratch the surface of their amazing usefulness. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that it was interesting or informative, or at least that it entertained you for a little while. If you did, in fact, like this video, please comment, rate, or subscribe. If you didn't like the video, still, please comment and rate, and if you still want, please subscribe. I would like to hear what you think, what you think would make this channel different or better. One quick thing before you go. Today is Mother's Day, and I just want to remind you that our mothers did quite a lot to bring us into this world so that we could build with Legos today. If you can, maybe you could give your mother some flowers, or at least give her a hug. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I bid you all farewell. 
My name is Archimedes36, and I'll see you next Sunday.